We're finally here. They dropped the arrival to the public for Fear of God Athletics, and there's a lot. There's a lot that's going into that, so much so I will likely break this up into two separate videos just to make it easier on myself and easier on you. So I appreciate you tuning into this. And we've waited for this for three years since 2020 and the announcement of Jerry Lorenzo joining with Adidas for Fear of God Athletics. So the third pillar of all of the brands that he is in charge of. So you have Mainline, Fear of God, the Fashion House, you have Essentials, and then you also have Fear of God Athletics. And we've waited for this, but I think there's going to be a lot of mixed emotions and I want to touch on some of those and I'm going to speak just and just as myself from the perspective of somebody that yes I'm a fan of him and his designs and his ethos and I've supported beyond his time with Nike and that hasn't been the case for everyone yet they will have opinions and that's what people do so I'll speak from that perspective but also take a step back objectively and look at things from the perspective of maybe just an adidas consumer and that'll more so be the second video when we kind of break down i think what the items are that are being offered from this first drop but let's dive into this this video specifically let's focus on the exclusive gq interview he provided to them ahead of the fear of god athletics drop and there's a lot that goes into him sharing what transpired with Nike up until now, and I certainly have some thoughts. Now I said I may format this a little differently to tackle the GQ interview in chunks by Samuel Hines with Jerry Lorenzo. And the very first thing we learn, more insight on that departure from Nike back in 2018. So he was successful. He said he felt like he was paving the way. He was putting up the numbers for Fear of God Athletics to be a thing first with Nike. So that's where he first pitched this idea to have all three branches of his brand come together. And if you're like me, you may have already thought that he had that with the collaboration he was doing, but that probably felt more like one-offs versus a long-term plan, a long-term vision. And even a while back when the audio was released, I believe Paul showcased that on his channel for Locust and Wild Honey, it, Jerry didn't feel that they were on board with this long-term vision and that's what he wanted to know. Like, what do you see? I mean, if you're with somebody, you're like, what do you see in the future? Okay, I think that's a very <laughs> honest question to have with a brand if you have this long-term vision and it feels like more they're looking at the right now, short capsules, short collections, and then they just continue to move on and you don't know where this is going, but you would like for this to be something that is solidified. and. Clearly that's not what he felt that it was. And to think the night before you were supposed to go and pitch Fear of God Athletics, you get that phone call that says, hey, we have to cancel. I imagine it was very jarring. It can stop you in your tracks. And it didn't last. The, the collaboration itself, like that partnership was done. And I don't know Jerry's level of pettiness, but I have to respect it with the last Fear of God one being titled The Question and him saying right before that there were perceived questions in the relation to myself and Nike and the direction we were going. And, you know, if it was a little bit of uh, foreshadowing about how he felt, then it came to fruition. And unfortunately, that partnership ended. Now, some people acted as if it was the end of the world. And it wasn't things in, it didn't have to be the end. He is still and has been designing and putting out things that are true to him and in alignment with him. It just didn't work there and that's okay. I understand that Nike tends to be the end all be all for so many people, but if it's not in alignment with you, then that's not what it is. And so he moved on. Now he talked to some other brands and he mentioned that in this article, but he settled with a partnership that he felt was in 100% alignment, literally three stripes down his neck um, for his tattoo, in alignment with himself. So to have fear of God, to have essentials, to have fear of God athletics. And let's dive into that a little bit more. Athletics is all about gear for actual sport. That'll be the focus for the next video, the follow up to this one. So just hold tight when it comes to that. But one thing he said, let me just read this to you. The ambition is no hype, no collabs, no lifestyle. And he mentioned some other brands that focus heavily on the lifestyle for those designers with Adidas. And I think that may be a point of confusion for some consumers. And that's why it deserves its own separate video when we look into the actual product itself. So just kind of keep that on the back burner. But for actual sport, that is the intention for athletics. That's what he said. The partnership itself with Adidas that hasn't come without question from the public of, 
hey, what's really going on here? Because we originally thought as it was announced that Jerry would be in charge of Adidas basketball and he would be the leader for that direction. And then when the Adidas basketball line dropped, it was reminiscent of some things we would probably see from Jerry, but then he had to come out and clear up rumors that I am not associated with any of this. This is not part of Fear of God Athletics. You'll know when athletics is dropping and I had some of you tag me and things and reach out and listen, the man made it clear that's not what he was associated with. He said it was based on some differences, some creative differences in which he chose to step away. And I've seen people say uh, online that, well, does that mean that he's just really difficult to work with? I'm gonna shy away from saying that and be very apprehensive to say that. One, it's easy to just go ahead and assume what somebody is or, or is not. And I wouldn't want somebody to do that about me. When it comes to you having a very clear, uh, decisive direction of maybe where you want to go with things, and that's not, it's what's coming out is not lining up with that. I think that is well within your right to say, hey, I wanna take a step back and no longer be associated with that. I don't see a problem with that. For you, you feel like you're standing on business and what's in alignment with you. And for others, it could seem like, well, maybe you're just not, I don't know playing nice or going along. Everyone will have their own perception and subjective opinion on that. But I don't think that that automatically means like, oh, well, you just must be very difficult to work with. No, he knew what he wanted to put out and did not. And one thing he said is he wanted to come to Adidas and do something that they couldn't do on their own as fear of God. And how many of you thought, well, this is what we would have seen from fear of God. So yeah, he kind of stood on business there where he wanted to do something different. But the next part leads into David Beckham. And I think too many people underestimate just how big that man is globally for the sport and for Adidas. Nike has Jordan, Adidas has Bex, and that's a big inspiration for Jerry in relation to Fear of God Athletics. And I think within sneakers, you have to step outside of yourself. I say this all the time to you guys, you gotta step outside of yourself and realize on a global scale, some things are far bigger than what you perceive them to be. So yes, you have Michael Jordan who has transcended any and all for basketball and sport and lifestyle and sneakers. But those giants within football, we say soccer here in the US, but within football, globally, they are just that. They are giants. So when you think about what David Beckham means to uh, to Adidas and same thing of what you think as Messi means to the sport itself and him also being under the brand of Adidas, it's great to be able to see him lean into that archive of what inspired uh, Fear of God Athletics. And he did that. He took that trip to Germany. If you followed him, you were able to see him in the white gloves holding uh, different pairs from the archive and the vault itself. And we see that with like the rivalry, the 86 low that comes out and what that inspired for his own iteration of that. So I do just appreciate that fact. I am a David Beckham fan. And so to know that he was inspired by someone that's been with the brand for as long as any of us can remember, I think that says a lot to him trying to bring in the heritage of Adidas. And it's always been something that is simple, but executed really well. And I think that's what will see with Fear of God Athletics, but this is the part where we dive in and it gets a little interesting, at least from a consumer perspective. Quoted in the article, looking at a sculptural poncho made with a soft techie fabric, it looks like something you'd find at a luxury fashion boutique rather than at Dick's Sporting Goods, which is the point. That is the point from Jerry's intention and direction. I just don't know if that is the point for your everyday athlete. And I think that is where we may see this very clear separation of the target audience for Fear of God Athletics and then the perceived and assumed consumer that shops at Adidas for athletic purposes. Because think about, you know what? I have a tech poncho from Nike. I have it in there. It is Nike tech. It is a poncho. It is great. It stands out. It turns heads. It's not an item I reach for to head to the gym personally myself. It's not an item that I would wear in an athletic event myself. And I don't know that we should assume, but could others similar to myself feel that way? I think so. I think they absolutely could. So Jerry wants to transcend, he wants to elevate. And let's just read uh, the additional part that he put in there. So he said, you gotta swag out while you're waiting to play and he's just saying this in relation to baseball and basketball players, he can really envision and see them in these items, but there's still gonna be that separation of, I'm just gonna say income level of who may be okay and athletically being in something that is gonna be at the price point of right in between a mainline item 
and uh, just a collaboration item because these will be up there. We will get into prices in the next video, but looking at these prices, I don't know that they are the standard of even what maybe some college athletes are going to typically pay or think that, you know, see themselves paying to have these as warm ups or maybe as part of their athletic endeavors that is the only difficult part for me that's that's gonna that's the difficult part for me thinking of myself as an athlete and i am sweating and i am having to launder these items all the time yeah i want to be swagged out i want to look good i want to feel good but it's always going to be at what cost personally i love the idea of jerry wanting to get back into a time where a pair on the court was also a pair you reach for for lifestyle purposes now he also stated that his his uh his final product is a little bit more lifestyle than what he wanted but that's what you actually need the reality of performance pairs today they have gotten so far away from lifestyle because they have updated the tech and made them lighter and and better for lateral movement and explosiveness they've done what they've needed to do on the tech and performance side but then it really has seemed to take away from the lifestyle aesthetic and you have jordan brand where they will give you retros, but like you're happy to wear them lifestyle, not necessarily on the court knowing there is better tech available. So if Jerry can merge those two worlds perfectly together, then great. Now I felt like he already did that with the Fear of God 1 back with Nike because that is something you can wear on the court and you can just walk right on out the arena and have it on foot and it go with your style. So I think he's already doing that, but there was a much more important part that he touched on and I really hope a lot of you took this into account, okay? Word for word, I think what Kanye did with Adidas was something that only he could do and I have too much respect for him to come in after him and try to fill a hole. So that's the last thing I'm trying to do. I'm hoping to get out of that conversation. I'm hoping to get out of that conversation because the comment sections, whether it's complex or nice kicks or any publication, it is riddled with everyone wanting to allude that this is reminiscent of Ye. Let's just let this be Jerry and let Ye be Ye boat great era of adidas and yay and we understand that let this just be this this man has said it time and time again he is not trying to come in and fill some hole i know that adidas has said this could be great for them in 2024 and they would look for this to be like another pillar with you know under the adidas branding and i would agree like that's what you would want jerry to come in and do but let's also like be <laughs> honest with ourselves for those of you who said Adidas would just go bankrupt that they didn't have yay, again, look at the stock price because it's not giving bankrupt, it's giving doubled since they were no longer with him. Yes, they took some losses. Yes, they're gonna have to deal with that. But all I'm saying is they have still weathered that storm. So I would like to see this next chapter with Jerry not be inundated with Kanye rhetoric. Close out patience is a virtue and Jerry stated nothing will be compromised and him being a perfectionist it means we're all just going to continue to wait until things are exactly what he would want them to be which means the performance payers are going to have to wait until 2024 but he says they will be light they will have the performance that you would want and that they will transcend the court and that is something I'm very interested in so I'm going to be very candid and direct the footwear is what I am most interested in looking at my own life being pragmatic about lifestyle about what I wear in the gym Am I going to have this cart full of items from the Fear of God Athletics drop? I will not. And so I don't want you on a cliffhanger thinking that I will present that to you here in a video. I will not personally. Now, one thing he also stated with his relationship with Adidas, it's about do you have the patience to understand each other's perspective? And I have to be realistic about my perspective and what's going to work for my lifestyle and what's going to be the, you know, like, what is the value <laughs> present for whatever I am buying. And it's going to come more in the footwear for me personally versus the apparel for fear of God athletics. There is one look that has blown me away and I absolutely love it. And it also appears at least to me to be the most athletic in nature, but it's the entire scope of me being in the gym and thinking of what I wear and what makes sense for me, the line itself does not. And I'm gonna dive a little bit more into that in the follow-up video because I feel a lot of customers that are not already purchasing mainline items or designer uh, items themselves are gonna feel the same way love the entire like the the visuals that we received oh my goodness he did it again with the visuals but I just also think that uh yeah, we'll dive into that in the next video. So please go ahead and comment your thoughts below for this video. I really appreciate you tuning in. You can also check out my initial thoughts when we heard about Fear of God Athletics. And as always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace.